Hello, everyone. Okay, today our podcast will be about independent trip. So our guest speaker girl will be Tabia from Austria. Hi. Hello, <laughs> hello, Tabia. Please introduce introduce yourself to other people, please. Hey, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my name is Tabia, as you mm -hmm. already said. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Austria. Mm -hmm. I'm currently studying in Austria and I have finished school um, one and a half years ago, high school. And after that, I went to Asia and I went by myself. And yeah, that's why I'm here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great. So when did you start your this independent trip from which year? Did you start? Um, I started last year, so that was 2019. <laughs> okay. Um, in October, and I came back to Austria in in order of um, Corona, of course. <laughs> so I had to come back in March. Mm -hmm. So I, I was abroad abroad for half a year. Okay, so you spent half a year, you mean, for your trip? Yeah. Exactly. So great. <laughs> so can you please tell your the destination when you were traveling? So what was from which country you started and then mm -hmm. like with which countries did you go? Like which direction, please? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So my my original plan was to go to India by land. So I didn't want to fly um because of like climate change <laughs> and mm -hmm. I also just don't like plan planes mm -hmm. so um, yeah I decided to go by land so my first stop was in Poland mm -hmm. because I, I started in Austria and Vienna which is where I'm living um, and then I went to Poland and to Russia and then I went with the Trans-Siberian train for four nights um, to Siberia, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in fact, and then down to Mongolia, where I met you. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, and after that, I went to China and Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, and then I had to fly back to Europe because of Corona. But yeah, that was my my route. <laughs> okay, wow, that's great. It's amazing. Yeah. So you told me about Mongolia. Okay, so this podcast probably Mongolians will hear more. So mm -hmm. can you please tell me how was it? Yeah, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> no, it was great. It was great, but it was completely different to everything I have experienced before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never been to a Asia before. And so Mongolia was like my first country in Asia, which mm -hmm. I visited. And mm -hmm. after that, I, I found out that Mongolia was also different to all the Asian countries I went to after that. So, um, yeah, it was great. I, I think I didn't see that much because it's hard to travel in Mongolia. There are not that many buses and you always have to go back to Ulaanbaatar. And um, yeah, but there was like so little, <laughs> there was nothing everywhere nothing just landscape and and horses and sheep and cows but there was like so much in this emptiness <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i i can't i can't describe it and the people were amazing like i i i have never been to a country where uh -huh. i felt the culture is so alive that so many people are living the culture and appreciating it and loving it and everyone wanted like all the mongolian people wanted to tell me about their culture mm -hmm. and were really proud of their culture and about mm -hmm. their country and i think that's amazing i i don't think that i have such a i don't know after that i i was thinking about what's the culture of austria i'm not even sure but i, I had like the feeling that i that i would know the Mongolian culture better than the Austrian, even though I had lived in Austria for 18 years before that. <laughs> but okay. yeah, yeah, that's, that's like my experience. 
I see. Amazing. So you said that something was different, right? Then you said it's like you feel like there are like more cultural things which you never seen before, right? Mm -hmm. And there's something different cultures and different traditions things probably. So yeah, that's true. I would say more little bit things. When you go to somewhere in Mongolia, so some different mm -hmm. areas, different countryside and it's different places, you will see different cultures and different histories you will hear about. So mm -hmm. that's really makes tourist people very excited to see more about in other places in Mongolia. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, because every place you step, they are different stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I have the feeling that the stories, like the history and the past is so alive mm -hmm. and all the people like to to think about it and to remember it and I think that's a beautiful thing yeah that's really mm -hmm. beautiful <laughs> because they don't forget anything about what happened in Mongolia before right this long mm -hmm. time about thousand thousand years ago so how people built this beautiful big country so how is it before like maybe it was you know, so different. It was so, mm -hmm. so much bigger than now and so much different things here, more independent, more like brave people there. And that's we really like to read and listen about our long time ago old stories, his stories. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when would you like to go there again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think you might need to see more places in Mongolia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I, I, I'm. I'm pretty sure that I will come back one day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I can only rec recommend to all the to all the people who are not from Mongolia go there. <laughs> <laughs> did you make some good friendships there in Mongolia where, where I, you were I did <laughs> <laughs> you did I, I met, I met how a long did you stay girl. there <laughs> from Mongolia her name is Segi <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay um, what she has done with you <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> We went to to her parents and her daughter, and we also saw many cool places in the capital city, like the black market. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice. I, I stayed in Mongolia for, I think, one month and maybe one week. I'm not sure, but something about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you see the, did you see the train, right? The train trip, the train. maybe whole night you stayed in the train, in traffic <laughs> train, <laughs> and see was... many Mongolians yeah. <laughs> around you. Do you sleep there overnight? Did you? Uh, yeah, I did. And what what I have to tell you, it's I think the most amazing thing about Mongolia is that everywhere you go, every, in every public place, there's Mongolian music, like everywhere in the bus all the time it never stops and also in the train i thought maybe in the train there's no music no <laughs> there's also music <laughs> <laughs> okay is that really similar yeah <laughs> europe also you have no we don't in europe we only have like maybe pop songs american or but not in the train we don't have music <laughs> there. and also not in the buses <laughs> <laughs> so you said you so told me before like when you were in the bus and you heard probably similar this Mongolian tradition music something right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so then you just quite recognize it oh that song yeah. I was hearing before <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's so funny so you said you went to countryside when you just arrived in Mongolia mm -hmm. with, with their reason right so the countryside was beautiful, the nature things was close, right? Not too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. 
but I wonder, I, I, I wanted to work on a farm. Mm -hmm. So I went to, I, I forgot where it was, but it was like the direction of Erdinet, but a bit further. And mm -hmm. I, I went to work there on a farm, but I didn't get along well with the farmer. So I decided to, to come back to the capital city earlier, which was pretty sad because I, I liked the countryside a lot. I just didn't like the farmer. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So there's yeah. uh, many, many nice places you can see and many, 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 you know, different things. And when you come back to Mongolia, mm -hmm. even my one uncle, they live in the countryside with this all farm things for long years like all their life mm. like maybe 50 years and oh, or maybe wow. 60 or something so they always say if you bring your any tourist friends here where we stay mm -hmm. we'll be very happy for them and because they like to help other people to other things and mm, they have wow. this old farm things and when you come back to Mongolia, it will be welcome for you, okay? You can stay there how long you like, okay? Uh, how long, as much as you can, you can stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's I know you great. like yeah. this kind of farm teams, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I realized, you know, when I was Mongolia, so it's like, I met you, so I realized you didn't use much as you can. You just don't really use the poem when you were traveling. But that that was very good because you were focusing around everything, what you saw, right? And you say to me, you just contacted with your family. How long? Like one, two weeks, one time or one week, one time? Mm -hmm. Please, can you tell about this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I just... I don't know. I think I think sometimes <clears throat> it's annoying to be always to have to be like in touch with everyone mm -hmm. all the time. So I think that's like one of the problems of our modern times <laughs> that that's everyone's true. just attached to their phones and can't stay away and have to be always available and can't just um I don't know. Um relax. <laughs> so I was like I don't want to, to have that on my trip. I just want to enjoy it and just to live the moment and don't have to think about my friends and family back home all the time. I, I just I want to think about them. So yeah, I think I, I, I deleted all of my social media. So I just had emails, <laughs> very old school. Um, no, that's great. That's great. With what we need, this is true, you know? You know, you were the big example, actually. When I see you, when I saw you by the time, that's yeah. good. That's very good. It's very annoying. It's very annoying. When I use a lot of time in these platforms, I don't feel good. Because when yeah. I travel, I was traveling around Russia by train for five days to Kazakhstan, okay? To reach the oh, Kazakhstan. Yeah last end of November 2019 so I did same things like you did I didn't use my phone for a week I just didn't oh. want to even if there's the if there were internet there so I just wanted to contact with my family like a week one time or like three days one time and 10 days it takes it took 10 days for traveling on there because I left Mongolia, then I took like five days to reach the Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. Oh no, maybe like, yes, like more than two weeks, I think, yeah. Because I stayed in Kazakhstan five days, and another two, 10 days will be the, my two sides trip, it was. So it will be, it, it was like for 15 days, right? Let's oh, wow. Say. Yeah, so, but that's too short. <laughs> I mean, when I go to, when I'll go to Europe or somewhere by train or something, it's like cheaper trip this way. And that's amazing because I don't really spend much time to travel, right? Travel. Because yeah. as I like to do is 
little bit similar like you did. And I just like choose something not easy way, mm. quite harder way, but more good like experiences yeah. there and try That's to true. make more real life for me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah If you just fly true. with money, <laughs> that's not real. You yeah. can't see something different in the world. That's true. And if it's way too fast. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just love the, the flow the flowiness of traveling. Just, and yeah. Yeah. Also you like to write, right, Fabia? Mm -hmm. So oh, to write? Yeah. Oh yes, I like. So, that. what was you were what was you were writing when you were traveling around these places? You were just noting what you saw. Yeah, I. It was like a bullet journal. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, I, I was just like writing what what I was experiencing and what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that also some poems <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> and yeah I should in fact I haven't read it for a very long time now I think mm -hmm. I should definitely do that again but yeah there was so much inspiration so it was really easy to find something to write about <laughs> now when like when there's a lockdown <laughs> I don't really know what to write about because my life is like every day the same. But yeah, traveling is very, very a lot of inspiration. Okay, I would ask them one another question. Mm -hmm. How would you? How did you? yourself get started travel by yourself just by yourself like independent through so can can you repeat the beginning of the sentence okay how did you feel to travel by yourself oh. and get started how did you feel how did you organize your trip when you started right Ah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I first uh, the organization, I didn't organize that much. <laughs> I just organized, okay. I organized the beginning. So I was, I was like checking the visas for Russia and for um, Mongolia. No, not for Mongolia. Just for, oh yes, for Mongolia. <laughs> so, for Russia and for Mongolia, I think. You need visa <laughs> for Mongolia, do you? Yeah, you, yeah, I already yeah. had it. Okay. Yeah, and also the Trans Siberian, I booked it online. But I think if I if I would do it again, mm -hmm. I would just book the bus to Moscow and then buy the train ticket there because I think it's cheaper than if I bought it online before. So I did that, and that was like my kind of preparation. I also bought a warm jacket because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was going to be very cold. It was so cold in Mongolia. It was freezing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and a sleeping bag and stuff like that. But I I didn't prepare that much mentally. I think I I just I just really realized that that I was like going to be away from home for such a long time on my own when I left. So I was like sitting in the bus and I had that playlist which I um, which I made before I left like two days before that <laughs> I called it my travel playlist I don't know and mm -hmm. I was listening to these songs and they were really sad songs and I just started to cry in the bus <laughs> I was like oh no I'm not up to this I'm such a lonely little girl <laughs> um, uh, okay. but yeah But then I, I I soon got like used to it, and that it was very normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you started your this independent trip, if your family was, uh, you are too young to make this trip. Is there any strict things was with you? Mm -hmm. Not my parents, because my parents, 
um, went to Asia too when they were young. Not that young. I think they were like in their mid twenties. Mm -hmm. but they also went to Asia so they were like okay if if you want to do that go for it um mm -hmm. I I mean yeah they were really upset and they they did worry but they didn't tell me because they were nice <laughs> but my grandparents were really upset and also all of the all of my friends parents every time I went to a friend and the, their parents were told me were like you can't do that. <laughs> You're way <going> too young. <laughs> How will you survive? <laughs> I was like, okay, hit, relax. <laughs> but you brave girl. <laughs> you brave girl. Oh, I, don't know. I really liked your attitude, your the personality, how you show to people and how you contact with others. Which means when someone traveling like you and really like managing their emotions and wherever they are where right that which you were you were doing which i liked it yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna ask you two questions then we will end this podcast very soon okay mm -hmm. fine so it's like now yeah now you would say in some countries, probably in your country and in Europe, maybe this your same age, you're this young generations from the 19 or something 18, they started quite earlier for their independent trip, is it? Um, I don't know if you can generalize that for mm -hmm. all the European countries. I, I'm pretty sure you can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, maybe i can i can talk speak for austria and maybe also germany mm -hmm. um yeah there are many young people who who decide to to go abroad after their um high school mm -hmm. but a lot of them don't go just on their own a lot of them go with friends or i don't know a lot, lot, lot of them go to Australia. <laughs> it's like the common, the common destination. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there, there are definitely also some going to Asia. To Southeast Asia is also very, um, yeah, a lot of people go there. But mm -hmm. yeah, but not that many. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's it has of course become more normal to do that, probably because the people in in Europe got wealthier not in Europe in Austria and in Germany a lot of them got wealthier and the parents can afford to to support their children going to other countries yeah, yeah. so how do you can I ask the question like how did you pay, pay for your trips when you were started to travel when you were starting to travel around other countries like how did um, you make your budget or how did you organize it right how did you yeah first of all i i tried to to spend um not that much money <laughs> i tried to <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but uh, of course i had to spend some of it <laughs> mm -hmm. so i i i worked and I just saved the money and um, because I, I knew when I was 16, I think I already knew that I wanted to go to Asia or somewhere after the high school. Mm -hmm. So I started to save the money, not only where I was working, but also when my grandparents gave me money or my parents. And when I got 18, my parents gave me some more money because they were like, okay, this is your money. Just you can do whatever you want. You can buy a flat. No, that was not that much money. <laughs> <laughs> you can save it to buy some in you maybe said, forty years flat, <laughs> wow. or you can, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can buy a bike. Maybe that was for, was enough money for that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is that yeah, they saved it for you? Is it? Sorry. Was that they were? I mean was that that money was they just saved it for you until you were like you are this age they yeah, just saved yeah. it for you until yeah. you are 1918 yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Mm, that's amazing. Mm. Is this common things in Austria? People do this? Austria? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of... I don't know how it's called in English, but it's like you, you have a kind of bank account and there you save money for your children. And then when they are like, when they have a certain age, they, they get the money. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you find something very amazing from your, this independent trip? Of course, it has some risky things. It, it had, right? It got some risky things on the way you, while you were traveling around alone, right? Around mm -hmm. somewhere alone. But you felt something more stronger about yourself. You felt something more independent, confident about yourself. That's for sure. So, yeah. what would you recommend? This is last question, Tapia. Okay. What would you recommend to other, your same age, young generations or other people and other people about when this peop when the those people get started their independent trip what would you recommend to them mm. Mm. I, I think the most important thing is to be open for all situations all kind of situations and when there's like a new situation you're not used to you can just don't don't uh, like run away but be be open for it and be um i don't know confident that everything will be okay of course when you feel like anxious and when there's a risky situation you shouldn't stay and be like oh i'm so curious <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> but, but yeah be, be curious and talk to the people who live there and um mm -hmm. yeah, just, just get to know people who live there who can tell you something about it and don't just watch it like a movie just be part of the movie mm. yeah just like speak out and communicate with other people even you don't understand their traditions or cultures yeah. and their language even the people don't speak as english it's like you do but you can do body language and your uh, yeah 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 you can communicate with everyone you want to. It's like you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Body language is a good language. <laughs> That's true. So, you what did you say to yourself when you were traveling alone? What did you what what words what kind of words mm -hmm. did maturate like maturate? For you like what how did you do it yourself like encourage encourage right encourage yourself yeah how did you encourage yourself mm -hmm. so you just nothing, say nothing else really than i i say to myself at home i don't know just that uh, maybe that i'm probably that i'm okay like i'm okay <laughs> like i am i don't have to change i am enough like stuff like that like when i don't feel good <laughs> but yeah and, and sometimes when i didn't feel that social i was i didn't want to talk to any people and i was like Tell me, yeah you have to talk to them because it this is your moment this is your trip this is this sh supposed to be the best time of your life and then sometimes I have to tell me, no, it's fine. You don't have to now. You can just spend time by yourself. And it's okay if you just want to lie in bed and watch a movie. That's also fine. That's true. That's amazing. <laughs> That's very good to you. <laughs> okay. So what I say to myself is, when I was traveling around other these nine countries by myself, I always think about, like, I just wrote down on my note side of phone so mm -hmm. i say to me you are not alone you never really travel alone because the world is full of 
friends. Okay. That's who are, true. Yeah. Who are waiting to get to know you? That's it. Right? Mm -hmm. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't think it's hard or don't think you will be alone. No. Mm -hmm. There are many people around there. You are around your sides where you will be. So you get more friends and more friends will know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tabia, that was really good talking with you. So yeah. we are going to we are going to finish this podcast at the moment. But many people will see you and listening about your other things next time again, that's for sure. No, that mm -hmm. was great time to talk with you. That was yeah. great speech with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same. <laughs> Thanks for <having. laughs> Okay, so I'll see you next time. Yeah. Okay, so how's the Austria? Is everything good there? Yeah, it's fine. It's lockdown, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll see you next time again. That was great see time. You. Amazing, incredible. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. See you again. See you.